another Terrence Scapes video. Today I wanted to talk to you about some of the changes that I've made to some of the water features on the site uh, and also discuss a bit of the change that I've made in the modular boards in general. Uh, so first, uh, the waterways, uh, if you've uh, seen my work before, you know that um, they've been typically coated with a glossy surface. I use Envirotex Light for that surface. It's a very durable two-part epoxy resin and gives a very smooth, glossy finish that I think looks pretty good for waterways. But I've always wanted to put in a little bit of motion into the water, and I've been reluctant to do so in the past in some instances, as I had a, a hiccup with a project I did probably a year ago in which I applied an acrylic gloss medium and it peeled off after I had shipped it to the customer. So I had him send it back to me at my cost. I always back up any of the work that I do, fixed it, sent it back, had another problem, had him ship it back to me. And finally, I just went with the plain Envirotex because I wasn't sure what was happening. So what I did is, um, here you can see the effect on it, and I'll tell you how I tested it with another piece. So if you take a look, what I've done is I've applied the Envirotex and then applied two coats of the gloss medium. This is a Mod Podge, and um, this is a uh, pretty durable, I think, in fact, a little more scratch resistant than the Envirotex gloss medium that gives um, the ability to ripple, let's see if I can get a little angle of light on there, to ripple the surface so that you can really get that sense of water movement a little bit more realistically. Now my concern about it peeling off is what's presented me with, you know, being hesitant, I should say, with using it in the past. So what I did is before I started to go this route, I decided to apply it to a few river pieces. I took a river piece sample, applied the gloss medium to it, and then thinking that temperature changes might have been the problem whereby uh, when it warms up, perhaps the materials expand at a different rate, when it cools, contracts at a different rate, and I thought that might be causing it to delaminate. I took this piece and I put it in my bulkhead. In Massachusetts in the winter, the bulkhead's very cold. And then I put it right on the furnace, and then I put it in the bulkhead for two days, then I put it on the furnace for two days, bulkhead, furnace, bulkhead, furnace, and kept trying to see if I could get it to delaminate, and it hasn't done so yet. So I feel pretty confident now that this is going to stay together uh, and give a long-lasting finish, and I've decided to move with this for all of the water features uh, that are on the site. So as I update the ponds and the swamps, I'll be doing another um, small set of photos for them and do also a small video that'll go up above those sections because it's a little bit too time consuming to replace every photo for every piece and set up all the dioramas for all the shots and, and whatnot. So I'm going to be giving sort of like a little update. And then as I change things periodically and improve them, I can update that one section and give you sort of a like, here's the latest view of what they look like at this moment. Um, so just to give you another quick look here, and this also gives you a chance to see um, what the current amount of vegetation I'm and doing on these boards. are. So you can sort of get an updated view of what the current work that's coming out of the shop looks like. A little... Let's see if I can give you a real close-up. Uh, there we go. So you can really see what the surface looks like with a little reflection in it. Alright. The last thing I wanted to mention is um, a little bit of a change for the modular boards. So um, just before I describe that, I'll just show you. Here's what the current Fords are looking like, the rocky Ford areas. So what I've done is I take some of the rocks and I sit them below the water line, take a few that stick up above it, and it gives it pretty nice, uh, varied, I think pretty realistic look there. Um, I was trying to stipple the waterway to be a little bit more aggressive in the rocks. And it's, mm, it's limited in how high a peak you can put on it because it is a fairly thin medium when it's applied. So I didn't worry about it too much. I think overall the look has improved and I'm happy with that and we'll see as time goes on. But the other thing that I wanted to mention is that now I'm coating all of the boards with foam coat. Foam coat is a um, gypsum plaster. It's produced by the Hot Wire Foam Factory and it is uh, mixed with uh, water and then you can add other things to it. The thing that I'm using is um, Boost. Um, I don't have the plaster here, but it looks just like regular plaster. Um, Boost is a hardening agent, and it enhances the bonding ability of the plaster to adhere to the foam. And the thing that I liked most about this 
was that first, whenever there's a small ding or, or a, an object strikes the corner of the board, in the past, because I was using PVA, if it was a very hard indentation caused a, almost like a chip in the foam, sometimes the uh, PVA would peel off a little bit right around that, that area. And uh, so I always include a little bit of uh, repair material with all of the uh, boards, a little bit of flock and some instructions on how to do a quick touch-up. Uh, but with this foam coat, with this boost, it bonds really aggressively to the foam. And I think um, I have not been able to separate it. It literally peels the foam off as a layer before it lets go. So I think this is going to be much, much more durable to retain the surface coating, even if there are strikes to any parts of the board. Uh, you drop a building on it and it hits. You know, you're not going to get flaking or chipping. And because it's a gypsum plaster, it also adds quite a bit of strength to the top surface. I mean, it's a thin layer. I have to apply it pretty thin because I paint it on with a brush. And in order to be able to do that, you have to mix it fairly thin. So it's not like I'm applying, you know, a quarter inch of cement to the top of the boards. Don't get me wrong. But it does add quite a bit of strength to the top surface. And it's going to resist damage a lot more. So that's a new coating that's going on all the mod modular boards from now on. And, um, of course, that does add a little bit of cost. Um, I'm really charging a little extra, mostly just for the materials. It cost me somewhere between $15 to $20 in materials for an entire board set to use that foam coat. And then, um, because also I'm doing a little extra labor now on the waterways, um, it takes me, you know, 10 or 15 minutes probably to apply this gloss medium. I do two coats, and I have to go really slow because it'll get bubbles in it, and the bubbles won't degas. So um, I try to take my time with that and make it look as, as, uh, as, uh, as well finished. I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Uh, but, you know, try to make it look as, as, as high quality as I can. Uh, it means I have to go kind of slow. So there's been a slight increase in the modular board sets uh, in price-wise in that regard because of those two steps. But I feel like I want it to be the highest quality that I can and have it be the most durable, longest lasting, best looking product that I can achieve. And so uh, in order to be able to do that, I have to just add a little bit to the price. But um, I think you'll find that those, uh, those changes are worth it. So, um, of course, if you want to see uh, pictures of any of the different boards that are available, you can always go to terranscapes.com. There's photos of all the different boards that are available. And of course, remember, I also have, so I have the Verdant set, which is finished in the screen. I have the Martian set, which has that reddish look with the buttes. I also have uh, the Urban set now that has um, the more uh, finished canals and the roadways. And you can always uh, swap between the sets and say, you know, I really want... Um, Martian river style, but I want it finished in a green verdant set, or I want um, the, uh, the roads from the Ashland set, but I'd like those to move through the, the verdant board set. Any of those kinds of swaps are, are you know, easy to do, and all you have to do is just add them to the shopping cart and let me know exactly what style you'd like them finished in. So um, changes are always um, encouraged, actually, because I want you to get you know, the perfect set that you're going to enjoy using the most. Uh, so you can always go to terranscapes.com for that. And, of course, there, there's some contact information if you want to email me, or you can email me at mike at terranscapes.com. And uh, hopefully um, I'll hear from you if you have questions. And uh, keep an eye out for more videos. I've got some other new releases coming up that uh, should be out within, I don't know, I'm going to try to release at least a video a week. And let's set that as a goal for the next several, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Talk to you soon.